Hello folks, I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking. Welcome to the shop. Y'all come on in and make yourself comfortable. Tonight, we're going to make an ingrain bowl and we're going to attempt to use a Robert Sorby ring tool to do that. I just got this ring tool, picked it up at an estate sale for a ridiculously low price and just wanted to give it a try and see how it worked. Let me go ahead and get the outside of the bowl shaped and we'll be right back and we'll try this thing out, okay? Okay, we're gonna start out shaping this piece of anaqua, a tree I understand grows down in South Texas. Not sure where else it grows. My neighbor had it growing in their backyard and decided to take it out. And guess who got it? So we're gonna see if we can't start shaping. This is gonna be our bottom. And right now I'm using a 5 8 bowl gouge on this. Kinda give it some rough shape. I think we can speed this up just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the size we want our tenon. Remember when you're marking a tenon like that, side next to you can touch, the other side can never touch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just bring a skew up as a scraper right in there. That's all we need to get our tenon on there, just right. We're going to go ahead and reduce this uh, down here. Just remember, we're going to take this all off. I'll just come in with this uh, little flush cut saw and it will make. Uh, Make fairly quick work. Gives us a nice little identifying mark so if we want to put our live center point back in there we can get pretty close there. Okay this is where we really get to have fun and really the uh, the point of this is not necessarily just the ball making. In fact more to the point of uh, this turning is really to use this ring tool and see how it works. Okay folks, this is the Robert Sorby ring tool. Like I told you earlier, I picked this thing up in an estate sale for a ridiculously low price. For that reason, I bought it. I can't honestly tell you that I would have gone and paid full price for it, but I got it home and I looked on the internet it was really kind of hard to find much information on it. So I went to YouTube, of course, and looked for videos on it. I didn't find a lot of videos on it. I felt like it was the perfect opportunity for me to try and figure out how I like it and share that experience with you folks. So understand, I do not set myself up as an expert or even real knowledgeable on the Robert Sorby ring tool. I have done a little bit of research and I will show you how they told me to sharpen it. After doing quite a bit of research, I finally found a piece of paper or a document, I should say, on Robert Sorby's uh, website. And it said to sharpen it, don't grind it. If it gets really bad, you can take a conical grinding stone and put it in the middle and that's supposedly not supposed to hurt it. However, what they suggest was that you take a stone and just stroke it along the side. Now primarily it's going to cut on that left side. Unless you're turning your lathe in reverse, then it's probably going to cut on the right side. You're not going to be doing a whole lot of cutting in the very front there. So I have gone in, I've done some sharpening on it, 
and we're going to see if this thing will cut. More to the point, we're going to see if I can cut with it, okay? Let's go ahead and see what it does. Okay, so I want to come in. You're going to hold this thing almost vertical like so. And as you come back across, It will cut. This is made for end grain hollowing. One thing I'm seeing is these uh, these ribbons are coming off here. That's not uh, that's not chips, guys. That's shavings. So we're going to switch over and I'm going to try and make a cut with the, the other side of the ring. Well, that doesn't seem to be, that may be easier on the sides. Wow. Man, that thing will, uh, if you turn it just a little bit, it, it gets a little grabby. It certainly, uh, certainly is cutting, and that is, uh, that's a nice finish on that cut, too. Let's, let's keep going here. Just going to kind of keep an eye on it. Make sure we're staying sharp. Uh, so far this thing's cutting pretty good. I think I'm going to slop and give it just a little bit more of a sharpening here. Okay, one of the things that concerned me when I saw this is this is a 3 8 inch shaft on here. And you, you see I'm about uh, an inch and three quarters over that shaft. It's starting to vibrate pretty bad. So let's keep on going. I'm going to move the tool rest in. We'll keep on going and see how that works. As long as we're no more than about an inch, inch and a half off the tool rest, this thing seems to be doing pretty good. All right, I'm going to try to work this out here, right around the rim out. I'm going to leave a little, uh, little bark on that. And I want to bring it all the way out.
Again, got a little bit there I need to pull out, and I think we'll be good on that. Let's take a look at that there. I'm liking that. Let's keep on shaping a bowl. This is certainly a new experience, folks. We're going to go a little bit deeper now. By the way, this wood is green. It's been cut down for a while, but it's still very wet. Hear that chatter? I'm getting just a little bit too far out over the tool uh, rest. I want to just check some thickness because this is kind of deceiving here. Yeah, we're we're almost half inch thick there. We're just a little over a quarter there, so I'm gonna thin this out right here just a little bit. If you'll notice, I changed the angle just a little bit with that tool so that it wasn't reaching quite as far out over the tool rest and the vibration went away. So it's something we do have to be aware of with this. And like I said, I think it's primarily because it does not have a very big shaft. One thing about it, you can tap it on the lathe and it clears that uh, ring out real nice. For some reason with a bowl gouge, I, I, uh, I've used it long enough till I have a pretty good idea how much I'm taking off. And you wouldn't think there would be that big a difference, but uh, quite a bit. 
clear. Clearly there is. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. If you, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go down and click the subscribe button and the uh, notification bell so you get notified of future videos coming out. Let me just show you the finish on the inside of this bowl that this ring tool gave. Now, I haven't hit this with sandpaper at all. I'll go ahead and zoom right on in. That is straight off the tool, guys. That's an ingrain turn straight off the tool. No sanding. Will I recommend this tool? I'm not quite ready to do that. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. Robert Sorby didn't send me this tool. They didn't pay me to talk to you about it. It's one I picked up in a estate sale, and like I said, for a ridiculously low price. A couple of things I liked about it, the super smooth cut. One of the things I didn't like about it this small shaft, if you get very far out over the tool rest, it's going to start to chatter and vibrate. So only time will tell as to whether or not I use it a lot or it ends up taking up space on the uh, tool rack. I will get back with you folks and let you know what I think about it in the future, okay? By the way, if you'd like to help support the channel, please go down and look at the, uh, in the description at the links I've got. Got a lot of links on things that I use, different finishes, tools, stuff that I think may be helpful to you. And if you click on that, it does help the channel out. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy turning.